Hi, I'm David Picciuto, and today I'm going to walk you through the basics of the Retina Engrave 3D software for your full spectrum hobby laser. This is the second video in a multi-part series I'm doing with Rockler. If you haven't already, please check out the first video, Getting Started with Your Full Spectrum Laser. There will be a link in the description. Okay, let's get started. Typically, you would design your artwork in your favorite design software. I like to use Adobe's Illustrator, but there are free options as well, like Inkscape. As long as you have successfully installed Retina Engrave 3D and have it open, you can import your artwork from your design software by choosing File Print and selecting Full Spectrum Engrave Driver. There are three modes to the Retina Engrave software. Raster Engrave, Vector Cut, and Design View. But first, we'll quickly go over the menu. The File menu allows you to open and save projects as well as save your workspace window setup. The Laser menu allows you to select your laser, change IP address, and save projects to an SD card. Since we're all set up and connecting our computer directly to the laser, this menu is rarely needed. The Tabs menu is used to show the Control Panel and the 3D Engrave tab. The Help menu is used for activation and software updates. Here, you can switch between inches and centimeters. The current position shows where the laser is from its home position. Home position is always the upper right. You can move to an exact position using Move To or move your laser head to a position relative to its current position here. Moving on to the next line. Here, you can open a file or project, save your project, clear the workspace and start a new job, zoom in, zoom out, and reset zoom. The home button moves the laser head back to the home position to the upper right. You should home your laser every time you start a new job. This ensures the software and the machine knows where the laser head is located. Run Job Perimeter. This will run the laser head around the perimeter of where your artwork will be cut or engraved. I run this before starting every job to make sure my artwork is positioned correctly. Perimeter Steps. This is the same as the previous button, but jogs the laser head one side at a time with each press of the button. Next we have Object Positioning. This allows you to have your artwork positioned from the top left of where the laser head is, or the center of where your laser head is. In most cases, I use the default top left. Here, you can test fire the laser for the amount of time desired. If you have the optional rotary attachment, this button will bring up the appropriate tab. Next we have Start Job, Pause Job, and Cancel Job. The Mode Select button toggles between the different modes and opens up their respective tabs. And finally, we have the Resolution menu that you can select the dots per inch while in raster mode. Moving on to the Control Panel. You can jog your laser head into position using the left, right, up and down buttons, the arrow keys on your computer, or the arrow buttons on the laser. Checking slow jog moves the laser at half speed. You can also unlock the motors and move the laser head by hand. There are some advanced import options that is used when printing from other software into Retina Engrave. The Vector Layers section controls the layer order, speed, power, and passes when vector cutting. We'll cover this a bit more later in the video. The two main functions of Retina Engrave is raster engraving, which is basically etching your design into the material, and vector cutting, which is cutting all the way through the material. Let's begin with raster engraving and etching my logo into a piece of wood. Make sure you have Retina Engrave open and connected to your laser. Open up your artwork in your design software. I'm using Inkscape, which is a free vector drawing program. From your drawing program, choose File Print and choose the Full Spectrum Engineering Driver and click Print. This will send the artwork to Retina Engrave. Switch over to Retina Engrave and you should see your artwork importing. Make sure to have the Raster Engrave tab selected as we want to etch our artwork into a piece of wood. You'll have some tools to the left that you can use to manipulate your art. Here you can rotate the image, mirror the image, invert, and scale. If you import art that has light and dark values, you can use the dithering options to choose how those light areas are translated into the etching. The logo that I'm using only has black, so no dithering is needed. To the right we have raster power. 100% is full power, meaning the laser will fire at its maximum levels. 
Lower values will result in lighter engraving. Below that we have raster speed. This determines how fast the laser head moves. Slower speeds will result in deeper burns. The speed and power sliders work together to determine how deep and dark your engraving will be. Different materials will require different settings. For our engraving, we'll leave them at their default values. Below that, there is the black and white threshold setting used to fade in or out portions of your image that are in the grayscale range. My artwork is black and no adjustment is needed. You can also choose the dots per inch resolution, which I'll leave mine at 500. Place your material in the machine and jog your head over to the top left of where you like your artwork to begin. Like I mentioned earlier, always run the job perimeter to make sure your artwork will be etched where you'd like. Once you are satisfied with your placement, you can click start job and watch your laser do its thing. The next mode we'll discuss is vector cutting. This allows us to cut all the way through the material. But before we import our artwork, we'll need to do a speed and power test to determine our optimum settings. Place a piece of the same material you'll be cutting your artwork on in the machine and jog the head to the upper left corner of where you'd like the test to be performed. From the laser menu, choose material and focus test. A pop-up will come up on the screen. Click on Run Test and the laser will cut a series of squares into the material with different combinations of power and speed. Find a square that was cut cleanly without too much burning and cross-reference it to the chart in the pop-up to determine your optimum speed and power. Now you can import your artwork from your vector software like Illustrator, Inkscape, or CorelDRAW just as we've done before and click on the Vector Cut tab. To the left we have Rotate, Mirror, Resize, and Vector Cross Hatching. Hatching is used to fill closed contours with a hatch pattern which is useful for engraving deep into your material. To the right we have Vector Layers. Right now we only have one layer, but if we go back to our artboard and select each object, we can give it a color. Then, over in our Vector Layers palette, we can choose the order in which each object is cut, as well as the speed, power, and number of passes. This is where we can enter our speed and power determined from our test. Technically, I don't need more than one layer to cut these three shapes, since they'll all use the same settings. Back to our artwork. Selecting an object brings up a dialog you can move, scale, reverse the cut direction, and disable the object. Once you have all your parameters set, you can jog the laser head into position. Run the job perimeter to make sure your artwork is placed in a desirable position, and start the job. In the next video, we're going to make our first real project with the full spectrum laser. If you want to find out more about me, check out my website at makesomething.tv. And as always, be safe, stay passionate, and make something.